First Baptist Church Florence has partnered with the Northern Thailand Impact Ministry since 2008. Our church actively assists the ministries of NTIM located in Chiang Rai, Thailand by going to serve, giving to support, and praying and advocating for their work. The Northern Thailand Impact Ministry is a nonprofit charitable organization that is committed to connecting people in need with people who care. For more than 15 years, the organization has been salt and light in the heart of Southeast Asia, where poverty is high, education is low, the needs are great, darkness is everywhere, and the love and message of Jesus is needed to transform lives. There are five key things that MTIM does. One is to send laborers into the heart of the 1040 window. Two is to build bridges to the lost through teaching English at Grace Language School. Another is to care for those affected by HIV AIDS. And fourth, to make disciples, train nationals, and facilitate church planting through Bon Atitan Church. They believe in this generation and in their capacity to respond to the challenges that cripple hope and dignity for the people. On our own, we can each make a difference in the world, but collectively as a team, we are a force for good that exponentially surpasses what we can do alone. For nine years in a row, our church has sent a team of volunteers to assist NTIM with ministry needs in Chiang Rai. 2016 was no exception. On May 21st, five of us made the two-day journey of thousands of miles. There are many stories that we could share about the 10 days we were there, but we'll share just a few highlights. One of the highlights of our time this year was the opportunity to share a word of encouragement with a group of young men at a soccer game. Jay, one of the Thai leaders at the church, recently started a soccer ministry to reach young men in the community. He asked me to speak at the break during their game. Using the Apostle Paul's admonition and instructions in 1 Corinthians about running to win the race, I compared the disciplines of training for winning a soccer game to the principles of success in life. I talked about setting goals, developing a plan, training, knowing the opponent, focus and concentration, and patience and perseverance. I concluded by sharing my personal goal in life, which is to live for Christ and to please Him. I also told them that I wanted to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those I encounter every day, including traveling hundreds of thousands of miles to share my faith and God's love with the Thai people so that they can hear, believe, and have eternal life. My prayer that day was to plant the seed in their hearts. Since then, I've prayed for Jay and the others to water that seed and for God to bring the harvest. Three years ago, when I was in Thailand, I met a young lady. We have been Facebook friends since then. I had invited her to church that day, and she quickly told me that she went to temple. She was an English major at a university very close to the church. I encouraged her to come and listen to the English message, which is translated to Thai, to improve her conversational skills. She has been coming to the um, church since then and playing the games and the activities that they plan for the college students. She wanted Beverly and I to meet her parents. This time they drove about an hour and a half to meet us. I'm praying that this is a step in the right direction to lead that whole family to the truth of God's love and salvation for them. Over the years, our teams have had the opportunity to conduct English camps and English fun days. This year, we spent time in two elementary schools of unreached people groups in Northern Thailand, the Mian people and the Aka people. Our willingness to spend a day teaching their students conversational English often results in invitations for Michael and his staff to return to the villages later for evangelistic outreach. Developing relationships and building bridges through English opens the door for opportunities to share the good news. As we were planning other mission projects to do besides the English camps at the schools, Michael told us of a school that had burned that was about an hour and a half to two hours away. Seventeen girls had died as a result of the fire. He had ideas of how we could minister to them. We went to that school one day and asked what we could do to help them. Suggestions were made by the school leaders. Donations were made by many, and school uniforms and shoes and other things were purchased. We wanted to help the families of the girls who had died. We planned to try to see them and give them a monetary donation. 
We also planned to see the families of the girls that were in the hospital. We went back to the schools a couple of days later, not knowing if we could see the parents of the deceased or not. But God knew. His timing was right. The parents had all gathered at the school. We gave them the money, prayed for them, and hugged on them. We left there and went to the hospital to see the other families and took fruit baskets and money for them. We also prayed with them. One lady had told us that she was a secret Christian. In the beginning, they had told her that her daughter had died. But on the way to the hospital, apparently she started breathing. There was a 50-50 chance that she would live. That mom has a great story to tell, and I pray that her story will cause her to share the love of Jesus to all she knows. We are grateful for the prayer and financial support that our teams have received from our church over the years. Thank you also for the opportunity to give you a glimpse of the impact being made in Chiang Rai. I hope you will continue to support us and prayerfully consider if God can use you to make a difference in Thailand.